just an overview sort of of today's talk. I want you to have the impression in your mind that now we have done all this work to build up the, the basic objects that I need to start anew. All right, so um, what we showed last time, or we sketched the proof of uh, um, Andre's theorem that BCM uh, uh, algebras exist for any complete local domain. All right, and so in some sense, the point of the today's talk is to talk about the ways in which we can now use them to try and mimic things from positive characteristic um, in mixed characteristic and, and sort of look at F singularities from this point of view. All right, so um, let me fix the following setup for the rest of today's talk. Right, so um, let RMK will be a complete local domain. Um, if I forget to say it, uh, usually dimension D. Right, and uh, all right, so I'm going to specify again that P is inside the maximal ideal. So there are two cases: either the characteristic P case, or meaning equal characteristic P. Right, so where the characteristic of R is also P, and the mixed characteristic case where now the characteristic R of R is zero. All right, so. All right, so the first uh, set of singularities I want to tell you about are what are known as BCM regular singularities. All right, so, and these were introduced by Ma and Schwede. All right, so uh, here we go. So let's say that fix first uh, BCM algebra B. Everything's going to be perfectoid. Let me say that. All right. So um, uh, we say that R is BC, or BCM regular with respect to B. Right, if um, it's normal, and uh, as Keiichi discussed this morning, also Q. Gorenstein, all right, um, and the main condition the map from R to B splits, all right, so there is an R module retraction here splitting off of B, all right? And of course, um, since R is assumed to be complete, that's the same thing as asking this map here is pure, okay? All right, great, so um, there's my definition of BCM regular with respect to B, all right? From this, uh, and this is a, um, so a pretty common trick here, so I can cook up an ideal which will detect whether this holds, and that ideal I wanna uh, think of as the test ideal uh, with respect to B. trace ideal, right? So we'll denote by tau b of r, well, just the image of the evaluation at one map, All right? So, um, and this here now, okay, so um, I want to think of as the BCM, or what was it, the B test ideal. And why I say that, and, and the motivation behind that is, um, is something that, that will come up later in the talk. All right? So, of course, um, this notation with the tau b, I, I haven't really used anything about BCM anywhere. So if I write tau um, sub s of r for any r algebra s, um, so this is, uh, some people call this the trace of s as well, right? That also notation is still well defined. Okay, so but note just from the definition here, we have that All right, of course, uh, this ideal detects um, whether you have something which is BCM regular with respect to B. All right, so that's what you do if you have a fixed BCM R, L, R plus algebra B, right? Um, and then, of course, we say that R is BCM regular. All 
right, without any qualifications, right, if, well, implicitly again, normal and Q Gorenstein, right, um, and it's BCM regular with respect to all perfectoid um, uh, BCM R plus algebras. Right. So again, uh, I can cook up an ideal that would detect this condition just by intersecting over all of the B test ideals for all B. Right. So you might write. Right. So tau script B. Right. To be the intersection. over all of the test ideals for all Bs, okay? And uh, um, uh, we've already seen something which is maybe not so easy to get just directly by looking at this. This intersection here, in fact, stabilizes, right? So the intersection over all of these will be equal to um, uh, tau b of r for all sufficiently large b because of the domination trick we saw or we asserted about BCM algebras before. So, right, so take any element, right, or any set of BCM algebras, if you will. I can always find another one so that all of the maps to the original set factor through to that guy. And in, when I do this, the um, traces can only get smaller, right? So it's pretty easy to convince yourself that that will give you uh, some B for which you have a quality. And once you do, any larger B, anything bigger than that, is obviously also going to, to be something which has to give you a quality, right? All right, so this is this domination trick of Mon Shui. All right. Is everyone happy with this? Okay. So there's my first sort of class of singularities that you could define. And we'll see in a second why this is interesting, right? Um, or what the relationship is to the uh, positive characteristic versions. But I want to do something now here at the board, which again, maybe in a class is not so great to do if you're trying to take notes, but the notes are all online. So I'm going to just tweak this to give a second set of definitions, okay? So, second topic, BCM rational instead of BCM regular, all right? So we say that if I have a fixed B, um, uh, R is BCM rational with respect to B, if well, instead of new normal and Q Gorenstein, we just have that it's Comacaulay. And, right, I'm going to tweak this definition here and uh, say not that it splits, but that the, the following map, well, let's do it in two ways, right? So, um, first is maybe the traditional way, the way it was first, defi first defined. the induced map on local, the top local cohomology, that should be injective, right? And of course, equivalently, right, so when I state it like that, it doesn't really look like it's, it's something that's all that close to BCM regular, but if I take the matless dual of what I have over there, uh, what do I get? Well, I can look at the HOM set, HOM B omega R, and that comes together again with, with some sort of trace map here, just evaluation at one, 
right? And that map is dual to the induced map on local cohomology, right? So um, equivalently, um, this evaluation at one map from hom b omega r back to omega r should be surjective, okay? So continuing with my tweak, I can obviously define an ideal, or not ideal, but test submodule, right? Analogous again, well, as we'll see, to the um, uh, parameter test submodule, if you will, right? By looking at the image of that evaluation map, okay, and that gives me at least some submodule of omega that detects BCM rational, right? And again, um, BCM rational in general means BCM rational with respect to all big Macaulay algebras, if you will, right? And the test submodule with respect to all the Bs is the intersection. And is the same as the test submodule for all sufficiently large Bs. Okay? Is everyone happy with my gloriously orangely decorated uh, tweak? Yeah. Ah, thank you. I, for, I didn't quite finish my, my tweak, right? So that's the implicit, yeah. Okay? Okay, great. So um, what are some of the easy implications here? And maybe this will start to justify some of the, the terminology to you already. Well, if you're BCM regular, then in fact, You must be BCM rational. Why? Well, if you're BCM regular, then all maps from R to B split. And what I can do is just take the splitting and hom it into omega R, and that gives me that the induced map over here is surjective. Okay? Moreover, of course, if R is equal to omega R, i.e., I'm Gorenstein, right? then a surjection like this obviously has to split off, right? So, um, if you're Gorenstein, then BCM rational is the same as BCM regular. All right, another easy one. Of course, BCM regular implies you are R plus regular. Now, I'm going to be a little sloppy with my notation here. I've only defined this assuming that I put in a B, which is perfectoid, right? And all my perfectoids had better be P complete, right? So I'm going to just omit the P completion from my notation. Um, let me note that that doesn't really affect anything because I can slip the P completion into local cohomology or to any of the HOMs because everything can be P completed. Okay? So, right? And, um, right, so, um, of course, R plus regular, so if this is a, ver a, vari a variant of BCM uh, regular with respect to a fixed uh, big Comacoli algebra, if you will, is the same as saying you're a splinter. That's also Q Orenstein. All right, so uh, this is just definitional, okay? All right, so the interesting thing here is that you already, even with these implications, run into something which um, uh, we don't know and is a, a very important open question in some sense, which is, the converse, right? So this is an open conjecture. 
right? So, but let's just take this, or I'll revisit this in a second. So after we've done the next set of uh, discussions, right? So um, uh, I could ask, right? In positive characteristic, we'll see that this is a version of asking that um, F regular and Q Gorenstein is the same thing as a splinter, which we know is true with the Q Gorenstein assumption. Okay? So, so my assertion is that that is true in positive characteristic. Right, which is why I want to make it a conjecture and mixed characteristic. All right, but any questions before we move on from the definitions? Which one? That's the conjecture. So the conjecture is that asking your R plus regular gives you that your BCMB regular with respect to all Bs, right? And so, yeah. All right, so, um, okay, so, and again, uh, I'm trying to be as slick as possible to write as many theorems as I can on the board. So I've compiled a compositum of as many things as possible to tell you about what these things look like in positive characteristic that really motivate um, uh, how they, they fit into the framework of this workshop. So, um, uh, but without saying some massive list of names, Right, so there are at least, you know, I don't know, too many to, to list here, right? But they include certainly Hoxer, Hunicky, Mosh, Weed, Smith, um, uh, and the list, Lubeznik, uh, myself, uh, many, many, Bargov, who knows, many people, right, on this list, okay? So um, uh, in characteristic P, right, so assume we're an equal characteristic P, right, so. The first is that BCM regular is the same as strongly F regular, right? And moreover, the test ideal, or the, this one with respect to all of the BCM R algebras, is just the usual test ideal of R which of course I can write in many, many different ways. So maybe because we're Q Gorenstein, it, uh, it doesn't matter how you think about um, which flavor of F regularity you'd like in the same way which flavor of test ideal is known to all be the same. All right, so look at the, the collection of all the test elements. And of course, um, uh, it's also known in the setting that you get many other things. All right, so um, the test ideal with respect to all the Bs is the same as the usual test ideal of R, which is the same as the test ideal for R plus, which is the same as the intersection of the trace ideals for all finite extensions, which is the same as the trace ideals for all sufficiently large extensions. All right, so R, I guess I should, yeah, okay, whatever. So. All right, so, and similarly, BCM rational is the same as F rational, 
And I have a similar string of equivalences for um, the parameter test submodule, if you like. All right, so tau b omega r is the same as tau r plus omega r is the same as the usual parameter test submodule of r. All right, so now I can't quite give the same type closure characterization here because if I stick in all parameter ideals here, I get the parameter test ideal, which is something slightly different, right? But what I get is the matless dual of, say, right, of HDMR modulo the type closure, right? So this is now a submodule of omega. Okay, and again, this is the intersection over all of these sort of traces with respect to all finite extensions. Or indeed, after a sufficiently large extension, all right? And so maybe um, in this framework here, this is a result of myself, um, Manuel Blickla, and Carl Schwed, but really is uh, a variant on the generalization of the original equational lemma due to Hunicke and Lubeznik. All right, so. So, um, so let me start my table over here. All right, so at this point, what this means in some sense is I have now a bunch of notions which I can sort of match up one by one. I guess maybe another thing I should say before I erase everything over here on the left, right, is that many of these equivalences in things like this on these two boards are discussed um, in my lectures from last summer on test ideals, right, and the set of notes that came out of that as well, right. So, um, so, um, but, right, so we have sort of paired up these notions and see that, well, the definitions of these guys over here and f reflect at least one of the definitions or characterizations of the guys on the right, okay? And of course, you can see I've tried to pair this up. There's a split, there's a crack in the board right here, okay? So, oh, what's your question, Holger? Everything, if I use a BCM regular, so, all right, so, so maybe here up here at the top, all of these are Q Gorenstein, normal, and Comacaulay, so I run into no problems. So let's not get into any of the difficult cases, okay? So Holger um, uh, points out that I am, so the obvious question, I mean, Holger's question is, what do I do if I have something which is not normal Kugorenstein or Kolmokali? And the answer is, you go to work, okay? So, great. So I paired these things up. All right, so, but um, uh, the point here is, when I have something in mixed characteristic, right, I can travel the characteristic zero just by inverting P, right? So, um, since I started, right? So, or at least equal characteristic zero, 
right? Um, so where I'm working now over, over a characteristic zero field. Okay? Um, and the point here is um, part of the package of results from Mon Schwede says that if I look at BCM regular, regular or rational, all right, so I get log terminal and um, rational, right, in characteristic zero. So I have a characteristic zero singularity notion, which matches up with the usual reduction mod P dictionary um, and many of the topics being discussed in Keiichi's lecture this morning, okay? Of course, you could ask if the same thing holds. For the test ideals, and what you would expect to get is, well, the multiplier ideal, or, okay, I won't say it precisely. I guess I will. and say the multiplier or submodule, right, or grout ruin schneider sheaf, if you will, right, in characteristic zero, right? So and at this point, these do not exist in literature, right? But let me say that we're working on it. So just as a quick idea, I can never remember how the order of the letters is supposed to go, right? So in work with um, Botma, Patak Falvi, Schwede, Witecek, and Waldron. I said the last two in the wrong order again, right? So in progress, right? Um, essentially, what we can show is some localization results, for this tau b, namely when you invert p again, what you get is exactly this multiplier submodule. Right? Um, and again, this, uh, these results uh, without the question mark, so in particular BCM rational inverting P gives you something which is rational, was referenced earlier this morning, uh, at least implicitly in KHE's talks. Right? So this is um, the essential ingredient together with what, knowing what happens when you go mod P, so the adjunction type statement, that will allow you to take something which is F rational in a single characteristic and then deduce that it is um, to do something in characteristic zero, okay? All right, any questions? So the, the only bad thing about everything I've done so far, we just gave a whole bunch of definitions, right, is um, much in the same way that um, <laughs> writing down a BCM algebra took us a, a fair bit of time in actually proving that result, um, uh, I've also been very impressed by the other lecture series speakers and many of the other speakers about how they remind us that it's important to be explicit and to give examples, right, of many of the things. So um, maybe it's not so easy to exhibit things and show that they are BCM rational, BCM regular. In fact, right, um, right this is proving statements that look like the direct sum end theorem, of course, took quite a lot of time and machinery. All right, so let me give you at least some examples. Right, so at least of BCM regular, in many cases these will be, these will be Gorenstein, so you know it's the same thing for BCM rational, and of course these are the stronger ones anyway, so all of these will be BCM rational. Right, so um, here's the first one. Right, so look at the Fermat in mixed characteristic, if you will. So look at ZP, power series to join Y2 up to YN and kill the sum of the nth powers of the parameters, okay? And the claim is that that is BCM regular 
if P is sufficiently large and M is less than um, uh, M is less than N, right, inside of this, right? So, and if this looks somewhat familiar, right, well, how do you show such a thing? Well, modulo P, these conditions produce the Fermat mod P in one fewer variable, right? And then I can use reduction mod P, right, if you like, or Federer or whatever you would like to do to show um, the corresponding statement um, that mod P is F regular. And then I have to lift this using some sort of a junction result, right? And so this was done in a paper with Ma and Schwede, Wittichek and Waldron. Right. All right. So some sort of general statement that assuming everything inside is Gorenstein, for example, if you get what you get mod p is f regular, um, you can lift that back up. Okay. All right. So there's one example. All right. So here's another one. Right, so ZP adjoined XZ mod X squared plus P squared Z plus Z cubed, all right? So again, um, to many of you, this may look like a familiar equation. This is, well, if P happened to be a variable instead, this is, I think, a D4 singularity, right? Um, so assuming P is at least five, or P is at least seven, right, bigger than five, right? Um, then this thing here is, um, uh, again, BCM regular, right? So, and this, as well as a detailed analysis of uh, things for all the rational double points, was done in a paper with Javier Covarho Rojas, uh, Ling Chuan Ma, uh, Thomas Polstra, Carl Schwede, and myself, right? So, uh, more generally, we showed that if you take a rational double point and mixed characteristic, with mixed characteristic zero p at least five, p bigger than five, then what you get um, is in fact a, a direct sum end of a regular ring, which is another easy way to check that something uh, is uh, BCM, rational or regular. So the more general statement here is, um, let's say you have a Q Gorenstein direct sum end of a regular ring. Right? And of course, I could keep going on. Um, so again, maybe I haven't put an attribution down here, but uh, this requires uh, some actual thinking. Right, so um, I also have some sort of toric-like examples or what are known as log regular rings. So these are um, and mixed characteristic, something which looks like a wit ring adjoined, uh, uh, completed, uh, semi-normal, uh, completed, uh, strongly convex, saturated, normal monoid, right? Modulo some equations, right? So something that essentially looks toric, right? So, um, and I can tell you more about that later if you'd like. Okay, so, but, and again, this, appears in work of, um, Myself with uh, um, Hanlin Kai, Sung Su Lee, Ling Shun Ma, Carl Schwede, right? So, which I'll talk about later in today's talk, but also generalizes work of um, Gaber and Romero, okay? Right, so, but the point is, is that even in some of these examples, it requires some real machinery to find explicit examples of BCM uh, regular things at this point, okay? Any questions about this? Okay, so with that, let me change gears. And what I want to finish to tell you a little bit about, is so hopefully you can see how BCM algebras uh, at this point fit into the framework um, of, of F singularities from these kinds of tables, right? Um, uh, this related a fair bit more to uh, Keiichi's talk. Um, but you could ask about if there's something I can do that will put you in the setting of uh, Ilya's talks. So is there a mixed characteristic analog of F signature and Hilbert Kuhn's?
right? So, and that's the next piece of the puzzle that I want to tell you about for the remaining lecture. Okay? So let me add to my setup a little bit. Right? So additional setup that will hold. So everything earlier plus I want to apply the Cohen-Gabber theorem to get a nice north normalization. Right? So Right, so um, find a regular um, regular subring, uh, so that the extension a to r is module finite, and on fraction fields this is separable. So this again came up in Ilya's talks already, right? Um, with let me let me write down a very explicitly here. So um, we're in mixed characteristic zero p, uh, or in characteristic p. So in characteristic p, then a is just the power series ring in say d variables x one up to x d, and in mixed characteristic, right? So a has to be the wit ring on my perfect field K, right? A join X to up to XD. And I, for this, just to keep the notation uh, easy to write down, let's set X1 equal P so that X1 up to XD are still a system of parameters, right? And the point here is somehow um, that sort of to tell you what the obstruction that has been around for a while to try to fill in this gap here of what the Hilbert Kuhns and F signature are, right? Everything we've done up here before involved taking bigger and bigger Cole-Macaulay algebras B, okay? And in particular, even the smallest one that seems to work, say in positive characteristic, is R plus. And my assertion essentially is that we, we think at this point that it's just too big. Even R plus is just massive in comparison to R, okay? Um, uh, so, and maybe I um, learned about this, uh, you know, from, from an example of Craig at some point. So certainly R plus is uh, not Noetherian, but it's even worse. It behaves in a lot of ways in a very non-geometric way. The sum of primes is prime and has other very strange behavior, right? So. Um, Maybe the right thing to do, or what we'll need to do, is to do something which goes sort of in the other direction, and I want to think about the smallest perfectoid I could use. Instead of using bigger and bigger Bs, let's go the other direction, right? So um, let's set A infinity to be um, right. So this ring where I join all the infinite pth roots of the system of parameters and then complete with respect to P. And of course, this is the same thing as A perf in characteristic P. And the, the other one I want to introduce is what I'll denote by R A perf, perfed, right? Which is Right, so, um, well, if I look at A infinity, we know that that thing is perfectoid, right? If I base change up to R, what I get is now, well, certainly finite over A infinity. So I can apply this perf functor of botten schulze to get the smallest perfectoid guy over this tensor product that, that both R and A infinity map to over A, right? So, and again, um, maybe it's worth saying this is equal to R perf. Right, so point here is that it's an analog of R perf, which is somehow much closer and smaller and close to R than R plus was in, even in characteristic P. All right, 
So in order to tell you about this uh, mixed characteristic F signature and um, Hilbert Kuhn's multiplicity, the notion I need to first tell you about is normalized length. which is uh, originally due to faultings, right? So, and so what he did is he says, well, let's take a, a module over A infinity and assume that it happens to be MA power torsion. Right, so in practice, uh, most of the cases, the modules I'm gonna be looking at, M kills it. So it could be MA torsion if you like. Okay, and to such a module, I can associate a number called the normalized length. Right? And you wanna do it in such a way that it should sort of mimic what you want length to be, right? But use the explicit structure for A infinity that I have. Right, so first, we're gonna do this in steps, and so the first step, if M is finally presented, right, so this is pretty much the only case I know how to do this very explicitly. So we define, if M is finally presented, um, in fact, since this A infinity really comes from adjoining P to the eth roots for all E, there's in fact some E, so that In order to define M, I didn't really need to go all the way to infinity. I could have just joined P to the eth roots for, for all the system parameters, um, i.e. M is isomorphic to, or is equal to, a base change, ME tensor over AE with A infinity for some, um, some ME. And in this case, you can set the normalized length to be, well, one over P to the ED times the length of this module ME that you base change to get your original guy. And the point here is that well, up to the P completion, this A infinity is given as the co-limit over all the, e, P, the AEs, but more than that, the map from AE to AE plus one, where I just join, join roots of each of the system of parameters, is um, flat, well, locally is free, right, of rank equal to P to the ED, all right? So once I know that, um, it's easy to see how the length scale, if I pass from AE to AE plus one, and the scaling factor will give me a number that's independent of how I chose this presentation over here of M. Okay? All right, so I want to define normalized length. I've told you how to do it for every finitely presented module. So the second thing I do is define it for a finitely generated uh, infinity module. Okay? And in that case, I just build it up from inside, so, um, well, every finitely generated A infinity module is uh, um, a co-limit of the um, finitely presented quotients, right, of this thing. So, lambda infinity m, I just set to be the infimum of the normalized lengths of all of the quotients uh, from a finite presented, finitely presented module onto M. All right, so certainly if I was dealing with usual length and I take a surjection, then the length of this guy has to be bigger and I, I force that property to hold, all right? All right, and then three, 
All right, so if now I know how to do it for all finitely generated modules, well, an arbitrary module is the co-limit of its finitely generated submodules. So if M is arbitrary, I set lambda infinity of M to be the supremum over the normalized lengths of all finitely generated submodules. Okay? And again, if I have a submodule of another module, I expect the length to be smaller, so this is capturing what that is. Right? So once I've done this, one checks. Right, so, well, this is in fact well defined. The, the crucial step still comes right down here in checking that this is independent of the presentation in the finite presented case that you chose. But more than that, what you get is uh, additive on short exact sequences. It really does behave like a, a length function in some way. So just a couple of examples, well, although the warning in some sense is they're not so easy to come by. Right? So one, if you take an ideal i inside of the regular ring A, right, then, well, with, the, with finite co-length, right, um, then the normalized length of a infinity mod i a infinity is still just the normalized length, or is still just the length of a mod i, simply because a infinity essentially is flat over a. So all the aes are flat over a, and I can calculate what happens along all those base changes. Right? So it doesn't really do anything if I look at ideals inside of, of um, ideals inside of a, right? And two. Second example, let's say that you take some non-zero element f inside of a, right? and just for simplicity here, or let's say that the characteristic of, zero, of a is, is p, so that a infinity is equal to a perf, right? then um, you can check that the normalized length of, well, a perf modulo. Well, now we're in characteristic p, so my element f in a perf has uh, infinite pth roots. Oh, what do I want to do? Still just a. Right, so um, take a perf and kill the ideal generated by those infinite pth roots as well as, well, I want all my modules to be m a m power torsion, so I might as well kill m as well, right? So the claim is if you do that, this normalized length is zero, right? And uh, one of the reasons I write this example down is there are many other properties of normalized length I'm not telling you, right? But one uh, particularly important observation here is, well, um, to put this in the framework of the last talk, this module I stuck in here is so-called f almost zero, right? f and all of its pth roots kill this guy. And one of the points of introducing normalized length is it gives you here some ways to capture that sort of in a heuristic way, things that are almost zero should have zero normalized length. All right, so I'd love to tell you that that statement was actually true, but um, uh, the pro so, and it is, but uh, which notion of almost you mean there um, factors into the statement, all right? OK. 
okay? So um, let me tell you the theorem here that really puts F signature and Hilbert Kuhn's on that table over there. So again, still say you're in characteristic P. All right, so as I said, if you want to do something where you add to that table and put something in mixed characteristic, often what you have to do is come up with a new interpretation of how you used to do everything in positive characteristic. And so that's what this theorem is going to do. Right? So the first thing is to say, well, if you take a ideal I inside of R with finite co-length, right? then um, the normalized length of r infinity, oh, okay, r perf mod i r perf, right, equals the Hilbert Kuhn's multiplicity, right? So, and, right, so before I write the second statement, I just want to point out that this is a statement purely in characteristic P. It doesn't use anything that you didn't have 15 years ago <laughs> to talk about, right? So, or much longer. So I have R perf I, uh, Hilbert Kuhn's multiplicity, whatever, right? Um, so in some sense, this is just a reinterpretation of the definition of Hilbert Kuhn's multiplicity, right? But it is one that allows you to get an idea of what to put on that table over there. So, and in the same vein, let's let I infinity be the um, non-splitting ideal of our perf. All right, so look at the set of all elements of our perf so that if you map one to those elements, what you get does not split, okay? Then, again, the normalized length of R perf mod I infinity R perf, in fact, equals the F signature. All right, so for the experts in the room, I challenge you go ahead and prove that theorem for yourself. It doesn't involve essentially any of the perfectoid mathematics that I've actually done uh, in the earlier lectures. Exactly. So I just erased it, but you could ask, where's the limit? Where's the convergence? Where's anything? And somehow, right, it's hidden inside of the definition of normalized length. So there is content to this, right? right? So you have to do some fair work, but it means that the end result is something that's not visible as a limit. It's just a length in some generalized fashion. Not that I know of, right? So I'll say something about the relationship with, to usual multiplicity here in a second, but um, that's the thing I'm going to say in a second. So, <laughs> all right. So, and again, um, um, so but if you go ahead and try to prove this for yourself, I, I just have a caution for you, all right? So. R perf is not finitely generated over A perf, right? So you have to really work with the definition to try and figure out what this means. And in fact, tracing through back many of um, Mellon Craig's proof come down to finding ways to get around this fact, right? So finding, for instance, some element C so that C times R perf is, con R perf is contained in R join A perf uh, in the existence of test elements all deal with exactly this problem in some other, some other way. Right, so, and maybe I'll say more. I'll put a sketch of this in the notes as well if you'd like to see it afterwards. All right, so, okay, great. So we're in the setup for the actual definition. All 
right? What are the perfectoid Hilbert Kuhn's multiplicity and signature, right? So well, again, in either mixed characteristic or characteristic P, right? Take a finite co-length ideal, and I just set. the perfectoid Hilbert Kuhn's multiplicity. Oh my goodness. Oh, okay. Right, ex perf, not hk, right, to be um, the normalized length of ra perf mod i ra perf and the signature the perfectoid signature um, of R to be the normalized length of R A perf mod I infinity, where again I infinity defined uh, is defined as to the left, replacing R A perf with R, or replacing R perf with R A perf. Okay. All right, so to justify some of the notation, you'll see in comparison to usual Hilbert Kuhn's Hilbert multiplicity RF signature, you see these little X's up here at the top, right? And one of the reasons they put that there is My definitions depend on the explicit system of parameters I chose, right? So, um, and they depend explicitly on the presentations of A infinity that I wrote down, okay? So I joined all the infinite pth roots of the x's, but not some other system of parameters, as you saw, right? Um, if I want to go and add more, that takes extra work, but then often will make my ring big enough that I don't know what to do, all right? So at this point, we don't know uh, independence of x. Right, so let me just uh, finish the lecture series by giving you some of the key results. On these guys, let me get a slightly bigger piece of chalk. All right, so, well, and again, the point of these results, a lot of the things I'm going to write down are hard to show. The paper is quite long, 70 pages or something like that, right? But you'll see that that really starts to mimic what you think of for Hilbert Kuhn's multiplicity and F signature. So for instance, ex perf of R, which of course means ex perf of the maximal ideal is bigger than or equal to one, If, uh, and with equality, if and only if R is regular, right? Now, I've assumed R is a domain, so, um, you know, don't, <laughs> don't get too excited about doing the, about associativity formula on mixedness and things and other things. I'm just doing the domain case here, okay? All right, so, and similarly, SX perf is less than or equal to one with equality if and only if R is regular, okay? And moreover, the relationship between SX and Hilbert Kuhn's multiplicity also carries over So the um, perfectoid signature is the infimum over the relative uh, um, perfectoid differences, right, for containments of ideals, right? So this is the, the conjecture of Watanabe-Yoshida that Thomas and I proved, right? Um, this is the Watanabe-Yoshida theorem that um, 
uh, Ilya spent some time talking about. So you see the shadows of all the things from positive characteristic. All right. All right, great. So what's another thing that we know Ilya used today in his lectures? Well, we also know that uh, Hilbert Kuhn's multiplicity, for example, uses those Hilbert Kuhn's differences in order to detect um, a tight closure. So if I have a containment of ideals in R of finite co-length, all right, so um, again, the result is that well, it's easy to show from the definitions that the perfectoid signature or perfectoid Hilbert Kuhn's of J is less than the perfectoid uh, multiplicity of I, all right? But the interesting part is that um, you get equality, again, if and only if the extended full plus closure of I equals the extended full plus closure of J. So, so this um, right? So um, was really uh, flushed out in the work of Mon Heitman, at least the closure operation, not the statement on the perfectoid signature, right? Um, but uh, just to have the definition on the board, right? So X is in this ideal uh, IEPF, if and only if something that looks like a tweak of the tight closure definition holds, so there exists some non-zero element C with the property that C, X, C to the one over P to the E, let's say, is in the ideal I P to the N R plus for all E and N bigger than zero, right? So instead of just looking at IR plus, you add in the powers of P for all N, okay? No R is a domain. Everything is a complete domain, whole lecture. So, so yes, it's definitely there. <laughs> all right? Uh, C one over P to the E is in the ideal I comma P to the N R plus. Oh, X times that thing. Thank you. <laughs> right. So C to one over P to the E multiplies X into the ideal I P to the N R plus. Yeah. All right. And uh, this is what Ilya referred to before. If Y went up to Y D is a system of parameters. Right? Then the um, perfectoid multiplicity of Y with respect to the X's is equal to the standard Euler characteristic, um, uh, just as you would expect for multiplicity or Hilbert Kuhn's. Right? So, um, but the warning here is that this is not easy. We have to go to some great lengths in this paper to show this, and that's partly because the Y's may have no relationship to these X's over here, and it's not so easy to switch them, okay? Uh, in particular, um, uh, uh, let me just advertise some a basic open question. You could take any statement about Hilbert Kuhn's at this point and try and mimic it for a perfectoid signature, and we don't really know the answer, All right? So um, here's something that's open. Well, you'd expect, we know from uh, this statement just by taking a minimal reduction, right, and applying this formula, that the perfectoid signature is bounded above by the regular multiplicity, right, or the perfectoid uh, multiplicity is bounded by the regular multiplicity. But I don't know, something I do in positive characteristic, that this is bigger than one over d factorial times 
E of i, because this uses something that's really about the Frobenius powers of the ideals, right? So uses something that I don't really have access to in positive character in mixed characteristics still at this point, right? So this this inequality is open. All right. So and this is sort of the last thing I'll tell you. So, if in addition R happens to be Q Gorenstein, then well, again, we know that F signature is positive if and only if. Uh, the ring is strong enough regular, so here I would expect the perfectoid signature is positive if and only if R is BCM regular, so it analyzes that, that as well, all right? Okay, so I have a lot more information in the notes, right? So if you're really interested, um, in particular, let me say, you can also do a tweak on this. You can do a dual F signature variant, so, which is something Ilya and I have investigated quite a bit, to get a perfectoid relative rational signature that will whose positivity will detect BCM rational instead of F regular, all right? Um, and again, maybe I should say that one of the big applications of F signature also comes out of the paper. So um, we get transformation rules for um, perfectoid signature under um, finite quasi et al extensions. So in particular, we recover sort of well-known results at this point about uh, with applications to the finiteness of local fundamental groups and finite torsion in class groups. Um, and in particular, we recover um, results on computing the perfectoid signature for finite quotient singularities, which in many ways date back to, again, the work of um, Watanabe and Yoshida and Huniki Lusky um, for relative Hilbert Kuntz and F signature, respectively. Okay? All right, so I mentioned the big open question with independence of the X's earlier, um, but I'll end here with another. Right? Again, very closely related to Ilya's talks, right? Pretty much anything in mixed characteristic that has to do with localization at this point still is very hard, right? So this is one of the reasons why it's taking so many of us to just invert P in those kinds of statements, okay? Um, but if you knew the independence, it'd be very natural to ask for localization compatibility, so I expect the F signature to only go up under localization and the Hilbert Kuntz to only go down, right? And then I could ask that this determines a semi-continuous function on, on spec R, either upper or lower in the two cases, right? And again, at this point, these are pretty much completely out of reach for all of us, right? So there still is a lot of stuff to do in order to make everything match over in this table, right? All right, well, thank you very much. I don't, we did something, I think there may be some inequalities inside of there, mimicking some of the, these things, but I have to look again before I can answer. So, yeah. Great question, right? So, um, as I said, it's one of the ideas here is that R plus, or these big Komokole algebras that we really have our hands on in some way, are huge, right? So um, if those are the things that are um, uh, making things look like F regular, right? So versus, so F regular is asking that bigger and bigger be split. Um, you might try to weaken this as much as possible. And so of course, in, in positive characteristic, F split is the same thing as saying the map from R to R perf splits, right? Not R plus, but or R, or, or, right? So, um, so forget, uh, but R perf, 
Okay? At which point, um, so the natural thing to ask is, well, can you just ask that um, you are split with respect to some BCM algebra, right? Or maybe that the map to RA or just R perfed in some absolute sense splits, right? So, but at this point, um, there are a group of us that are working on some of those things, and we can show a couple of results, but that's not fleshed out yet. But it's a great idea, right? So F split uh, characterization, um, F injective, uh, F no potent, all these other things, I don't have a way to put them here on this thing. And in some sense, these are the interior cases where things should be easy, <laughs> right? Um, that as I go to the boundary towards log canonical or F split and other things, we really are still kind of in no man's land. Very natural idea, which is the question was, if it's not independent of x, what do you do, right? And I don't know, right? So obviously, um, it is at least in one case where I use a system of parameters, right? But that's the only evidence I really have one way or the other, right? And so the idea then is that, well, maybe I just take an inf, for instance, okay? So, of course, if I want to characterize positivity, I have to be a little careful, right? Because an inf of positive numbers, unfortunately, need not be positive. Okay, so maybe I have to take a soup instead, and then I'm not sure, right? So 